Sorry, we're closed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Episode 108. I'm sorry we're closed. Like, it's, like I've always said, you guys know the drill, right? We've, we've dove into the, into the business. Of, and I got to say, I'm pretty happy with the feedback I've gotten about the business type podcast. It's just something that I've, you know, w- you know where I'm at in my life. Um, I was actually talking to someone the other day. They're trying to get me guests on the pod. I just don't want them. You know, I like guests. They're cool. That's how you grow the podcast. I understand that. I just don't. The podcast isn't here for me to become Joe Rogan, like I always say. It's 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 something for me to have fun doing. So that's what we're doing here. And um, I've, I'm now enjoying it more. Doing. I just don't want to become too classy. Like I feel like sometimes I'm teaching too much, and like I don't want to go to class. I don't know why you guys would either. So. Um, but I'm taking you through the process a little bit of how I'm doing these businesses, and hopefully it's interesting to you. Uh, but we're going to go into ep- into number two uh, today, and I mentioned it last podcast. I hope you guys had a great weekend, by the way. But I mentioned it last podcast that we're going to do um, that list, that, that four things I look for when I'm, when I'm doing businesses, I'm starting businesses. Um, and we did last time we did uh, how to raise and then kind of the financial partners. Today we're going to do strategic partners, straight strategic partners. Um, and this is, this is where it gets a little dicey. Strategic partners, you know, I do it sometimes, you know, where people want to bring me on as a, as a partner. They want me to invest in their business. And, you know, financially, there's just not enough gain for me. You know, um, you know I get the, the things you get offered a lot of convertible notes where you can invest a small amount of money, not much, uh, and then it can convert into shares of the company. Yeah, that doesn't really do anything for me. You know, if I'm going to put my time and effort into something, I want a pretty big gain out of it. And I just, right now, to be quite frank, I just don't have the money to be able to be putting in a lot of money into a business besides businesses that I'm going to do myself. So there's just no excess. So if if you um, want me to come in as a partner right now, and it's not my own thing, I'm probably going to ask to be a strategic partner and help you grow faster than you normally would. Uh, but I'm not bringing in money because it's just the amount of money I could give you is just not, it's just a blip on the radar uh, long term. And I don't want blip on the radar, so I'm not wasting my time for blip on the radar. So with that being said, strategic partners, because what I just said about myself and how difficult I can be when I'm becoming a strategic partner, they are notoriously difficult to to figure out. And they're, they're in a position where they can provide you value outside of money. Sometimes they can do both. And I touched on that a little bit in episode 107 about uh, financial, like the kind of the hybrid of the financial strategic partner. And then sometimes they can really only help you on the strategic side. Uh, you see a lot of people that, you know, are getting, kind of getting started in this business where it's restaurant, real estate, et cetera. And they have the ability to help you from a strategic standpoint and help you grow. They work, they're hard workers. They got a good feel for the business, but they just are not at a point in their lives where they can invest money in it. And you see that a lot, honestly. You see that more than you have financial partners. So, um, with that being said, uh, there's a few things that I look for and what you, what you want when you're starting a business. You got to have people that are going to run it. So if you're going to be a strategic partner with me, you got to be able to help me run and grow the business. Um, you know, for example, like for this restaurant group, I'm personally going to be the CEO of the group, right? Uh, I always look back. You guys to watch The Office, I'm sure. Uh, when Jim and Michael become co 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 what is it? They're... Um, uh, Michael is the regional manager, so co-managers of the business. And uh, I remember there's a whole bit from Oscar, if you remember that, he talks about, you know, where would Catholicism be without the popes? Uh, and all he goes through a few more that are really funny uh, of why you shouldn't have two managers. But in this scenario, there's, there's really just one. But, uh, you know, I'm be the CEO where's big picture, where Michael Scott was. He, was. he saw big picture, and Jim was day to day, more day-to-day operations. And we see that actually at Green Rock, me and my business partner who runs. We talk about, I, sometimes we joke that he's Jim Halpert and I'm Michael Scott because uh, I'm more big picture. He's more day-to-day because that's really what he's good at. He's phenomenal at the day-to-day operations and, and knowing the intricacies of how to run a business. I'll go, I'll call him on something from my end where I'm like, hey, listen, what do you got about this? Like, shouldn't we do it this way? And then he'll say something because he's been in the business for longer than I have and he's been really, he got his hands dirty as a bartender um, and working and working working hard and, you know, in this industry for a while, he can say, hey, listen, I've done that before. It just doesn't work as well as this way. And I'll be like, all right, sounds good. 
counter that, vice versa. Sometimes he'll call me and we'll talk about something and I'll be like, well, this information that I have, you just aren't privy to. Be like, I have this, like, and you're talking about big picture. Well, this is what we're trying to do. We might take a hit here, but because we're trying to gain a bunch here. Um, and then he he's like, okay, on board. So we just have like that really good dynamic. And that's when you talk about strategic partners. You talk about you know, someone who might not have the financial means to come in at a big way because this restaurant group is going to be a big raise. Um, but without them, the business doesn't go. Uh, you need that those people. And so you talk about in the beginning, when I, when I go down and talk about the business structure of this restaurant group, you talk about CEO, it's going to be me. CEO, um, we're still, I'm still talking to, to people, and I don't want to give away too much, um, but it's a day-to-day -day operations guy. You know, it, you know, that person might come in as a financial backer as well, but um, you're talking about someone who can, who can really run the business. Essentially, in this group, he's going to be, or she, is going to be um, essentially the managing all the managers of the different restaurants that we buy. And making sure they're run in the most optimal way, and making sure we're we're do, we're hitting our numbers, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, et cetera. Then you have one of the worst parts of it: lawyers. Now, lawyers are extremely beneficial. Uh, they help structure your business. They help protect you. They help protect your personal assets. Um, they do so much. They do a lot of good for you. They're just kind of annoying sometimes um, with how you have to do it. Sometimes you just want a handshake deal and move on. I know it's not the best way to do things, but you have that. Lawyers are also very expensive. So now this in scenario, the lawyer might have, the lawyer that you want to bring on, two lawyers, they might have the financial means to back, to come in and buy into the company. But what you would rather, because the restaurant group, say for example, is just starting out slow or starting out as a small business, which you always will, you don't want to pay them yet. They're expensive. Okay, so how about you don't come in? Let's say you don't come in. Say the the the, the points cost you know, half a million dollars to come in for how much percentage stake they want in. Or how about this? I let you come in. I, I'll go raise that from someone else. And you guys just work your, you know, essentially sweat equity. You become strategic partners because your lawyers are doing a great job. I couldn't ordinarily afford you, but I want you to protect the business and get it on the right structure, the right uh, framing to make sure that we can go to where we want to go. And now I get to have really good lawyers in-house and um, we're protected in a good way, and I didn't have to come any out of pocket. You have they they got paid in equity. That's another another great strategic partner to have. The last one that I want to go over are like kind of like CFOs, right? And this is kind of like a two part, right? You can get like an accountant who might be really good, but you usually afford a good accountant. Good accountants are are expensive, but you know they're they're very necessary. Um, and they're not crazy expensive. So you could bring on an accountant that's very good um, and perhaps maybe you wouldn't ordinarily bring on in the beginning because accounting is important because if you have a good accountant, yeah, he does great for taxes. He does great for a lot of different things. You're able to keep more money, be able to invest more money um, and, and just utilize the tax codes that you just don't like. I have no interest in reading tax codes. So having a good accountant, it can be very helpful, for, especially for a small business looking to grow. Uh, the other one, is a guy that can help you raise. Now, I always just kind of call them in layman's terms the financial guy. Uh, he's gonna look at he's gonna look at the numbers and do all these different things. I'm gonna tell him what I think the business is valued at. This is what the number we need. This is the number we need. Um, if we're dealing with banks, uh, these guys are good. They develop good relationships with banks. Where, let's say, uh, for whatever reason, they a bank wouldn't normally give me a loan at five percent interest. Maybe they would rather give me an 8%, but because it's coming from this guy and he's got great relationships with them from years past, they trust it more, so they're willing to, they're willing to let that slide and get me down to that 5% number. Um, these guys are just very, are, are valuable in the sense that they can do things for you that you wouldn't ordinarily normally be able to do. But with that being said, they do come at a price. And you have to pay them, and sometimes it's, it's a decent amount. Um, having those guys in your corner where at the very least you're getting a discount on these types of things, if not for free, for their equity stakes, or even just being a, a, allowing them to be in the business can allow you to uh, be a, in a position where you can really take advantage of the, of the networks they've created um, and be able to push your business further along than you normally would. Because in a normal scenario, you'd have to build, a, you know, I'd have to build one bar. Green Rock had Green Rock going. Then I'd have to own enough because let's say, let's say I own 100% of Green Rock. 
I have to get that business to a certain point so then I can borrow off the business and say the business is bringing in uh, for argument's sake so you guys have no clue what it's bringing in because it's definitely not bringing in this. It's a argument for argument's sake it's bringing in $40 a year. Well, well, the bank will let me because it's bringing in $40 a year netting. Maybe the bank will let me borrow $120 a year. Uh, $120 from the bank to grow to buy another restaurant. With in order to skip that process, you bring these guys on so that they can push this further. Okay, I got this, this, and this. We're doing this. This is the projections for next year. Can we go off these? Look at the, look how good we're doing. Hey, listen, give me. I can't. I just can't make seven percent work. But I can make. I can make four points work. You know, or four and a half points work. They want the business. We're trying to grow. Listen, we're not. I'm trying to buy a hundred more restaurants. Do you guys want to be the lenders for that? Or do you guys want to be like, oh, listen, the, the two points means more to us than the, the millions upon millions of dollars you can make in interest payments from me over the next 20 years as I try to grow? What's more important to you? So now the person you always deal with the bank always says that's more important, of course, but then the underwriter who is strategically placed to never be in a position to talk to you because he does, they don't want that underwriter to have any emotional ties to it, and they say, I don't care. So then you got to get the big, the head honchos involved, right? You got to get the, the the board of the directors, or you need the CEO, or especially these smaller banks. You talk about you usually talk to the CEO and CFOs of the smaller banks, and you try to make it worth their while, right? You like, listen, this is the growth strategy. This is what we're trying to do. This is we got this, we got this in line, et cetera, et cetera. That's also where lawyers come involved because if the if the business is structured really well. It's got all the bylaws in place. It's got it's got X, Y, and Z. All it checks off all the boxes of a legit business that's really trying to push. And we put a nice package together, a nice presentation together. Okay, okay, okay. These people are legit. Perception is reality, right, folks? Even though I am legit, but you want to be perceived as legit as well. And these guys are able to help you. They know what the banks want to hear. They know what they want to see. You, know, you can spend a lot of time, and you spend waste a lot of your time by putting together things in these presentations that mean nothing. Um, to the banks, when you have these guys, they, it's short, it's sweet. They look at, it, they like what they see. You look good, all of those things, and you could go get some good money uh, from the bank a lot faster than you normally would if you're doing this on your own. So those are really the four types of strategic partners: the financial guys, accounting, all kind of you know, one one B, lawyers, day to day, COO guy, and the CEO. Those are the, the the main strategic partners you want to bring in the beginning. It might expand people that can help you grow, people that have networks out. And let's say I want to let's say I want to grow out to Nashville. People that if there's a guy out there or a girl out there that has a really good network of of restaurants that they want to that we have the ability to buy better through them. Okay, maybe you get some equity because you can help us grow to that next level. Would I want if I own fifty percent of this business? Do I want fifty percent of a business that's making two million dollars a year, or forty percent of a business that's making ten million ten million dollars a year? Of course, right. So that's kind of how everything kind of grows and, and goes about, and that's what I'm doing right now. And is essentially just growing the businesses the best I can and using these strategic partners to help it grow faster. Uh, because I'm thirty, time is ticking. I, I, I get to, and when I start the business, when I make the LLC, which I guess I can tell you, no, not yet. When I make the LLC or the S Corp, whatever I end up making it as a corporation, I have 27 years to that day to become the world's richest man or take it to the stock market. I guess I get no stock market should be before that. But that's what Jeff Bezos did. He had 27 years to the day he started Amazon to, to retiring from Amazon. I think that's a pretty good goal to have. It's as good of a goal as it gets, if we're being honest. So, I always, I hope you had, a, or guys, I hope you had a great weekend. Um, I don't. I'm recording this before the weekend, but I hope that I had a great weekend too, to be honest with you. <laughs> so I hope, sure, I'm sure I did that back in Boston. I love that city. Uh, but I hope you guys did. I hope you have a great week. And until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Thank you so much for listening to the Sorry We're Closed podcast. Go subscribe to our email chain over at thepatlight.com and follow us on all social media. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Sorry, we're closed.